meeting is now streaming live on youtube to believe in the theater that you got a token as well hmm yes sir koi covid 19 pandemic ke liye video to sir mujhe add kare the screen to us theek hai sir ठीक है 
मेरो एक तो मैसेज तो चेक करो और नो किच बोलते तो एक मिनट आमिर भावाई का मेल कोर्ट चला मैं कोई यूट्यूब लिंक हाँ ठीक है चलते
Arnab, do you want to go? Yes, sir. Arnab, I'm begging for you. म्यूट करते
এখন সব ছবি দেখাচ্ছে না আমাদের যেটা ছবি দেখাচ্ছে তো গ্রিডটা চেঞ্জ করলাম হ্যাঁ গ্রিডটা চেঞ্জ করলাম আপনি Hosting on network bandwidth low that I have. Hosting on network bandwidth low that I have. Hey, Biru. Hey, tell me. Did you forget the call center? Yes, I did. Did you forget the call center? One minute, one minute. Did you forget the call center? Yes, I forgot the call center. Yes, I forgot the call center. Yes, I forgot. আমি মেইল করার চক্করে এইদিকে না এই করতে পারছি না সবাইকে আগে মেইল করছি আচ্ছা তাহলে কালটা লিখে দাও ওটা ঠিক করে দাও 
হ্যালো অর্ণব শুনতে পাচ্ছো হ্যাঁ স্যার শুনতে পাচ্ছি শুনতে পাচ্ছো তো ঠিক আছে শোনা যাচ্ছে শোনা যাচ্ছে পল্লবী তুমি সরজিৎ দাস নিজে নিজে কানভিট করে নিবে ঠিক আছে experts from Georgetown University, United States of America, once said, there are three important components of health in societal context. The first one is individual health care, individual clinical science. The second one is socioeconomic determinants. Third, and the most important one is public health. But COVID-19 pandemic has exposed, has revealed that the failure of public health system and what about the nutrition policies? Nutrition is also an integral part of the public health system. But the Global Nutrition Report 2020-20 clearly showed that India may miss the target. In this context, and when we are moving forward from uh, prolonged lockdown to unlock 1.0, what could be the role of nutrition science to develop, to formulate different sort of diets to make people functionally active and effective to rebuild the nation, to rebuild the mankind. So we thought of the, the conducting a webinar session to uh, 
cope up with this new normal approaches and to uh, for doing so uh, a responsible higher education institution like asansol girls college thought of conducting a webinar session on nutrition and diet perspective in covid-19 pandemic scenario so we thought of conducting this webinar session in association with two uh, stalwarts of nutrition research in not only in the state but also in this country so before inviting our speakers i would like to request our honorable principal sir to inaugurate this uh, webinar session officially our principal sir who is a political scientist and uh, an um ji ami baire elam apni kotha amake bolbe all of us and uh, he's our our principal and the usp of the success of asansol girls college is to be our head of the in अर्णब अनम्यूट करो तो म्यूट कर रहे थे अर्णब अनम्यूट करो अर्णब अर्णब अनम्यूट करो अर्णब अनम्यूट करो सो द सक्सेस ऑफ आवर असंसोल गर्ल्स कॉलेज द यूएसपी ऑफ द सक्सेस ऑफ आवर असंसोल गर्ल्स कॉलेज इज टू हैव द आवर प्रिंसिपल सर एज अ हेड ऑफ आवर इंस्टीट्यूट and dr shondip kumar ghatok sir now i would request our uh, host of this webinar session professor viru rajok to kindly invite our principal sir to this online platform but it's a request to all the speaker please use the blend of bangla and english use the convenient term that is called benglish for the language of your communication so that it will be much more comprehensive and easy to be understandable for the Uh, people those who are not from nutrition background so it's a request that use bangla and english together and the, what we say come uh, together a uh, blend of uh, these two languages that is called benglish so may i now please have on this online platform our honorable principal sir dr shodip kumar ghato over to our principal sir hmm. sir apna ke dilam hmm. uh, may i audible sir so, yes, audible sir. ंगल It, all of you know that at present the human civilization is passing through a series of crises in which covid-19 is the most challenging to us to the people of the globe we are fighting against covid-19 in different fronts though this is not a deadly disease but the challenge is that still we stand far away from any preventive vaccine of this disease so we have to combat this challenge very strongly one most important thing is that we have to challenge our, we have to change our lifestyle and into improve our immunity system so that we can combat this disease and defeat not only combat but also defeat the defeat the disease from this perspective the present topic is highly relevant and we are eagerly waiting for a research person in order to enrich our immunity system last but not least i convey my thanks to organizing committee to organize such a very important and relevant uh, seminar webinar uh, in this crucial juncture thank you i am uh, handed over the session to the arnold chatter thank you so much sir for your kind words and as you always say is us and your expertise in public policy and politics always help us and always triggered our um, interest uh, to uh, to uh, think about the marginalized sector of this community uh, sector of this community and your uh, words as you said that to our vision is to develop competent people and those who can withstand with this uh, pandemic scenario with the help of their own immunity and lifestyle changes and diet will definitely well, help us to Ali, we of course. That particular uh, success, and it will definitely help us to uh, think 
to adapt with the new normal approaches. So thank you, sir, for your wonderful input. And now I'm going to the, the invite, I'm going to initiate the first session of our webinar. And that is going to be uh, uh, dealt with uh, uh, public health nutrition. Kim to Jokuni, public health nutrition approach no ashe. Takun Amade, Gushoshoto Jara nutrition ye Gavishan according, nutrition ye Kats according, nutrition portion according, nutrition student. Tade Monimo de Proshno Takun, Vishesh Habe Jigu Tese, the post call COVID 19 situation. Babala Halo, the COVID 19 situation in Mudhe. Amrajan and nutrition ye Kats Kurchi. Tade Jone Kid Horone Kats Opeka Kurche, Kid Horone challenges. অপেক্ষা করে আছে এবং নতুন যে গবেষণার বিষয় সেগুলোই বাকি বা আমাদের এই সাবজেক্ট আগামী দিনে কিভাবে জনকল্যাণের কাজে আরো এফেক্টিভ হতে সামনে এগিয়ে আসতে পারবে এছাড়া देयर আর লট অফ থিংস লাইক সোশ্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং অ্যাপ্রোচেস এন্ড দা মাচ টক এন্ড দা রিসেন্টলি দা হাই টক ইন হাই ডান স্পিকিং ডান স্পিকিং করতে হবে হার্ড ইমিউনিটি in the which way the community is going to achieve that hard immunity a lot of questions are there proshno onik uttor khojar jonno amra jake peyechi is one of the legend one of the pioneer and one of the stalwarts in nutrition research he is our inspiration he is our mentor but i'm not going to read his cv because it's long you know i when i say when i use the term stalwart you can understand the magnitude of his work you can google his name and you will get all the information about him so i would just say one word in bengali that tar gobeshonar kaj sthan sthaniyo holo tar gobeshonar sthan sthaniyo holo tar gobeshonar man antarjati so professor of department of biomedical laboratory sciences and management with clinical nutrition vidyashagor university Dr. Devidash Ghosh. Sir, we are fortunate. We are extremely happy and privileged to have you amongst us. And now we are waiting for your exciting lecture. May I request Dr. Devidash Ghosh, sir, to proceed with his presentation? Thank you, Dr. Devidash Ghosh. Over to Dr. Devidash Ghosh, sir. Dr. Viru Rajok, host, could you please invite Dr. Devidash Ghosh, sir? এক্সাইটিং <laughs> But host disable the participant screen sharing. I like to screen sharing. Okay. okay. Just, just hold on, sir. Okay, sir. Now you can share the screen. So, good evening and welcome all of you. Uh, mm -hmm. I am also offer my heartiest thanks and congratulate the organizing committee of the Asansol Girls College for the organizing of such webinar in natural calm biological disease state situation. I hope that it is a very uh, interesting topic. that has been selected by this organizing committee that is the nutrition expert as public and educated some analyst critical analysis in the perspective of 21st century covid-19 okay i am professor devidas ghosh from the department of biomedical laboratory science and management with clinical nutrition nutrigenomics my laboratory nutrigenomics molecular medicine and public health okay now kind of <clears throat> full screen full screen 
Now, first of all, we like to say that what is public health? Now, public health that is participants are requested to don't calibrate on the screen. Somebody also, somebody participate. Participate. Participant are requested to don't calibrate on the screen. Did you video disable Korja? हेलो So first of all, we like to say what is health. Now as per WHO, you know that health actually covering the four domains, the physical domain, social domain, emotional and mental domain. And it also covering the well-being of these four domains of the individual as well as of the community members. And as per WHO definition, it is not merely an absence of the disease, but also the well-being of physical, social, emotional, and mental aspect of the individual. Now, what is public health? Now, public health, that means it is a science, as well as it is an art. And uh, skillness for the three P's of the society, that is the prevention of the disease, prolonging of the lifespan and the promotion of the health. And all these three approaches should not be covered by individualistic activity. It can be achieved through the organizing effort of the society. So it is a cumulative approach. And the public health concept was first generated in England in 1840. And the Public Health Act was implemented in 1848. And this public health concept was first originated on the basis of the on the basis of the background of this disease, which is known as the cholera. And therefore, the cholera is also known as that is the uh, father of the public health from the viewpoint of the disease concern. Now, public health is a organized community effort and is mainly concerned with the awareness generation and to accept the health, healthy practice, that is health-friendly practice. And this awareness generation, as well as the uh, actually implementation of the health-friendly practices is mainly concerned with public health educators. By the awareness generation, as well as by intrusion of the healthy practices, 
we can able to overcome a major part of the infectious rate of the infectious disease as well as the contagious disease. You know that contagious and the infectious disease are not also same to each other. Contagious disease that means which are actually spread from one individual to the other individual. But it is also under the uh, infective agent. But infect infectious disease that is actually due to the cause of the infective agent also, but it is not spread from one individual to other individual. As for example, tetanus is an infectious disease, but this COVID-19 is a contagious disease. All the contagious diseases are infectious disease, but all the infectious diseases are not the contagious disease. So regarding the awareness generation, as well as by implementation of the health-friendly practices, we like to say that if you can adopt the cost-effective way of reducing the global burden of infectious disease, it has been noted that hand washing can able to reduce 30% of this infection rate of this contagious disease. And similarly, if you can able to have it the scope hand washing, it can able to reduce 43 to 47%. That is near about 50% of the infection rate. So it is the best example, which is actually output from the research that awareness generation in the society or health friendly practices can able to interfere the spreading of this infectious disease as well as the contagious disease. Now, what is the mission of the public health? It tried to fulfill the society's interest in assessing condition in which people can be healthy. So all these public health policies are actually accepted on the interest of the society by which we can able to empower, we can able to enrich the public health. Its active focus is the entire population. Its active focus is the entire population, not the individual patient. Now, public health, previously it has been noted that it was a multidisciplinary subject. Multidisciplinary, that means more than one discipline in a particular branch of the science, maybe the basic science, or maybe the applied, or maybe the applied. When more than one discipline are actually interlocked to each other and designed their collaborative research, then it is or education, then it's called multidisciplinary. Public health first was multidisciplinary, but at present it is across. Why it is cross-disciplinary research? Because at present, the development of public health, research and development of public health is not confined in the clinical sector. That is the applied science. It is also make a bridge with the basic science. And due to the joint venture of the research and development activities of the basic science and applied science, for the medical science, engineering science, as well as the basic science, by their joint effort, we can able to achieve the goal of the public health. And for this reason, it is known as a cross discipline And the major objectives of the public health is also under three P's. First one, the, the projection of the health-related problem in the society. So there is a projection. We can able to search out what is the problem of the health in the community. And after the searching out this problem, the different policy decisions and the strategies are adopted for the prevention of this contagious society. Different strategies are designed, different strategies are adopted by the different policy makers for the prevention. The next one, we like to promote, we like to promote the health of the society by the implementation of this strategy. So projection, prevention, and promotion, these three P are the main objective of the public health. Now, as we have already mentioned that public health is a cross-disciplinary science. So the question may raise that what are the major disciplines in public health? The major discipline in public health are medicine, that is the clinical science, nursing is the nutritional science, the clinical science, nutrition is the basic science, 
health educator that is also the clinical science health service administration is also non clinical behavioral science is also non clinical and on the basis of this approach of this different discipline in the public health the concept of the public health is also changing the first concept of the public health that is the disease control concept and it was working 1880 to 1920 after that health promotional approach has been taken in the public health and that has been working from 1920 to 1960 and then social engineering phase it also came into the platform and it was also worked from 1960 to 1980 in social engineering phase that means maximum emphasis has been given on the lifestyle modification food style modification and at present you also see that social engineering is the most important step to tackle this covid 19 that is the behavioral changes that is the physical distancing use of the facial mask use of the gloves use of sanitizer etc these are all under the social engineering phase by which we can able to adopt the health friendly behavior health friendly attitude for the prevention of this thing and the latest concept latest concept of the public is the health for all and it has been working from 1981 to 2000 and beyond that. now there is a basic difference between public health as well as the clinical and all clinical medicine. clinical medicine is actually a subjective approach it has been mainly on concerned by the doctors nurses etc and it is patient so wahan tak pahunchne ke liye jo bureaucracy mein mission baat hai treatment and the therapeutic activities all are provided to the particular individual or particular patient in the health sector so it is a subjective approach but in public health which is the objective approach all participants are requested to kindly mute your mic objective approach actually the preventive and the promotive strategies are there and promotive strategies are all participants are requested to kindly mute yourself devidas sir apne ek to unmute kore nin mute apna ko mute kara hoye geche mute all er modhe apna ko mute kara hoye geche ek to kindly unmute kore nin in public health actually yes, the sir. object objective approach is also adopted where all the individuals of the community or all the individuals of the society are also taken and the different policy decision are also adopted by which all the community members are benefited by this approach so it is actually the objective approach cumulative approach summative approach but the clinical medicine or clinical health that is actually subjective approach so there is a basic difference between the public health as well as the clinical health these are not equivalent to each other now public health professionals these are also the mixture of the clinical as well as the non clinical person doctors nurses these are all the clinical persons nutrition expert the non clinical person biological scientist also the non clinical person microbiologist are also the non clinical person safety engineer civil and mechanical engineer who are also responsible for the safety sanitation etc hygiene these are also the engineering part of the or public health dietitian there is a non clinical aspect by which they can able to uh, formulate the therapeutic diet and at present this therapeutic diet is also individual centric diet not the group centric diet not the disease centric diet that the individual centric diet. and in this present scenario of this covid 19 the role of the dietitian role of the nutrition expert is immense in that because at present we must uh, improve our immunity that immune boosting and heart immunity is now the major weapon to tackle this covid 19 and in that uh, heart immunity the dietitian the nutritional expert has an immense role that i like to say later on now the four core health functions of this public health first one the assessment and monitoring of the community health problem i have also mentioned it that the touching of the health problem in the community next one the solvation of the problem the problem should be solved next one cost effective health care delivery cost effective the low cost health care delivery should be implemented here next one evaluation of the effectiveness of that care 
evaluation of the effectiveness of the program. That means evaluation is the most important factor. So after the implementation of a particular public health policy, what is the upgradation? What is the outcome? And in this outcome, three approaches should be taken. Okay, one is you not know, the immediate outcome. Next one, that is the medium outcome, that is the effect, and the long-term outcome, that is the impact. So what is the impact? As for example, uh, we all we already adopted so many behavior, health-friendly behavior. So what is the impact in the long run? That how we can able to uh, check the spreading of the COVID-19 in our society. So in the public health, the main theme uh, is the health promotion. At, at this present scenario, we have no vaccine against COVID-19. There is no specific chemotherapeutic drug against this COVID-19. So the most important aspect is the health promotion. We must improve our health. We must improve our immunity. We must improve our defensive power of the body so that we can able to challenge the COVID-19 and we can able to fit our body. So this is the main pillar of the public health. And this health promotion can be implemented by intervention policy of digit. So what are the intervention policy of digit? First one, health education. Through health education, through information, education, and communication, that is through dissemination of this knowledge to the society, we can able to uh, change our health-friendly lifestyle. We can able to change our food style, lifestyle, behavior. We can able to we can able to introduce the health friendly, uh, uh, actually defined events in our society so that the spreading of this contagious disease can be prevented successfully. So health education is the most important one. Next one is the nutrition intervention. So nutrition intervention is another strategy that should be implemented. That is with the help of different supplementary nutrition, supplementary diet, we can able to provide the nutrient, basic nutrient, as well as the more critical nutrient to the community members for immune empowerment. And at present, the government is also taking initiative for the division of the basic need of the nutrient through public distribution system. Another one, the lifestyle and the behavioral changes. This is the, another aspect by which you can able to implement the most health-friendly lifestyle in the society we can able to change the behavior so that the spreading of the disease can be checked. And another one, that the environmental modification. That is, with the help of proper hygiene, proper sanitation, we can able to change the environment and thereby the spreading of the disease can be checked. Now, health educator. Health educator that is belong to the allied health science that may be coming from the non-clinical subject also. And you know at present, so many non-clinical uh, experts are also uh, take an important role in the health sector. As for you know that uh, non-clinical epidemiologists are also appointed in the health sector. These are the non-clinical person. You know that different nutritional experts are also appointed in the health sector. As for example, you know that is a, a community rehabilitation, nutrition community rehabilitation center, community, community nutrition rehabilitation center for the handling of the Severe acute undernutrition children, where the dietitian or the nutrition take an important role. The health educator that can able to change the knowledge, can able to empower the knowledge, they can able to uh, spread the knowledge back in the society. They can able to raise the awareness generation. They can able to empower the uh, health friendly behavior. So that, that. Part, participate are requested to kindly don't celebrate on the screen. Those who are yeah. celebrating, they are recording. Their record is already mentioned in the database. All this so don't so don't do this. All this your, your your record is. Those who are doing this already recorded. So I am requesting to all participate. Don't celebrate on the screen. It is already already recorded in the database. A strict action will be taken against you. So Don't all the write on a screen. So all the knowledge, help, knowledge upgradation, awareness generation. These are important aspects of the public health, and these are known as the social vaccination. You know, vaccination that is through the antibody, you can able to check the particular infection, 
And these are the social behavioral changes by which you can able to check the disease. So this is the social vaccination. And the major domains of the public health, that is the risk factor of the disease, analysis of the risk factor of the disease. Next one, condition that interfere the spread of the disease. So we can able to interfere this condition. We can able to check this condition by which the spreading of the disease can be prevented. Immunoboosting is the most important aspect. That immunoboosting, immune emp empowerment by nutrient, and this is very much essential at this present situation to fight against the COVID-19. Implementation of information, education, and communication in the community. That what are the importance of such behavioral change? What are the importance of such health-friendly diet? This should be focused. This should be disseminated to the community. Otherwise, the community members will never follow it and overcome the misconception about the different news coming to the social media. Because you know in the social media, so many news are coming that we can able to develop the vaccine against the COVID-19 in the next week or in the next month. But it is not very easy. So we must adopt this behavioral change because this is only even at present. And if we go to the history of this uh, vaccine development, yeah, it has been noted that in AIDS, which was started in 1981, 39 years over, we are unable to develop any vaccine till now. First, which has been started in 2003, 70 years passed away, we are unable to develop the vaccine. March 2012, eight years passed away, we are unable to develop the vaccine. Zika virus 1947, 73 years passed away, we are unable to develop vaccine. We only developed vaccine against chickenpox, which was started in 1953, and the Vaccine has been developed in 95 after 42 years, so it's a long time. Similarly, hepatitis B, which was, which was onset in 1965, and vaccine was developed in 1981. That is 16 years, after 16 years. And the Ebola, which was started in 1976, and we just in the, in the uh, last year, we also developed this vaccine in 2019, that is after 43 years. So I like to say that you, you should not be misguided by the different advertisement which is going on in the social media that we can able to develop the vaccine against COVID-19 in the next week or in the next month. We are, we are accepting, we are welcoming this vaccine development, but it is not very easy. And so we, we do not deviate this health-friendly behavior as well as the health-friendly food style and lifestyle. Now this health education, what is the impact of this health education? What is the chronic effect of this health education? Because if we improve the health education in the community, then the in, uh, that is the incidence rate as well as the prevalence rate of the different communicable and the non-communicable diseases in the community can be checked. And as a result, the patient bed ratio in the health sector can be improved. So many bed remain vacant. So the patient and the bed ratio that can be improved by the health education. Similarly, patient doctor ratio can be improved by the health education. So quality healthcare services, quality healthcare services can be developed by this health education. Similarly, by sanitation and hygiene, this is a very much important weapon to control the contagious diseases like the, uh, that is the COVID-19. Now, nutrition intervention, that is a disease prevention, food distribution, and food supplementation. That is first one, that immunoboosting to overcome the immunodeficiency. This is the most important aspect at present against COVID-19. Individuals in this therapy, because this diet therapy has been developed, nutrition science has been developed, in 21st century, we are not actually concentrated in the group-centric diet therapy, as well as the disease-centric diet therapy. It is individual-centric diet therapy. Antioxidant enriched nutraceuticals, so many nutrients. By research work, it has been indi indicated that there are so many nutrients, ingredients, which are distributed in the different food items, having some pharmaceutical activity, and thereby this hybrid term, that is the nutraceutical. And some nutraceutical are also even antioxidant enriched antioxidant activity. And if you can able to uh, check the reactive oxygen species or oxidative reactive oxygen species, or you may say trigger generation, or you may say oxidative stress induced cellular injury, then the cellular immunity can be raised. Cellular immunity can be empowered. So reactive oxygen species generation can be checked. Reactive oxygen species generation can be checked by this antioxidant enriched nutrition. Similarly, food style modification. We must follow the health-friendly food style. This food style, health-friendly food style, and another is the immunity-weakening food style, that is the unhealthy food style. Immuno-weakening or immuno-killing food style. We must avoid the immuno-killing food style. What are these? There's the fast food, 
there's the junk food, there's the processed food, there's the preserved food, all are immunofilling food style. So in this present situation, we must away ourselves from this immunofilling food style. We must follow the health-friendly food style. And nutrient drug interaction is a major important domain. Effect of this public health, because there are so many that can able to intercept the drug or can able to pivot the drug. So on the basis of the nature of the drug, we can select the proper nutrient so that the drug can able to execute their uh, uh, maximum pharmaceutical activity on the target cell. And last one, that the nutrigenomics is the most important aspect of the nutritional science that nutrients can able to modulate the gene expression. There's a several genes can be switched on and switched off by the nutrient. And at present, I like to focus later on that vitamin D, with G, vitamin C, that these nutrients can able to switch on the most favorable gene or anti-inflammatory interleukin gene by which we can able to empower our body to challenge against the COVID-19. So this is the most important nutritional aspect in the public health that the nutrigenomics. By inclusion of so many nutrients in ready and in our daily diet, we can able to improve our immunity. We can able to check the reactive oxygen species and thereby we can able to fight against the COVID-19. Now lifestyle and behavioral changes. So these lifestyle and behavioral changes can able to help the knowledge development, attitude development and practice development. And that is known as the CAP strategy. Knowledge for A, A for attitude and C for practice. So by this lifestyle and behavioral change, with the help of knowledge, with the help of attitude, and ultimately it comes to the practice. Some, we know that COVID-19 will not uh, actually uh, finish uh, within uh, two months or uh, three months. It will remain uh, in the society for few months or even few hours. So we must change our attitude. We must change our practice so that we can able to interfere the spreading of this uh, COVID-19, that is a corona, coronavirus. So social behavioral change, which is the social engineering, is the most important aspect of public health in this 21st century and in this present year as well as the coming few years to, uh, to fight against this COVID-19. Now health research in the public health domain, allied health scientists, uh, this health research is the most important domain in the public. Basic and fundamental research are going on by which you can able to search out the different nutrients that are immunomodulators, positive immunomodulators. What are the nutraceuticals that are distributed in the different food items, which are responsible to, to, uh, to uh, tackle the reactive oxygen species generation? So this is, this is the basic and fundamental research. And you know that the main objective of basic and fundamental research is to develop the knowledge, to spread the knowledge, and ultimately to uh, generate a knowledge bank. And on the basis of the basic and fundamental research, the applied as well as the epidemiological research is also come out. And in this epidemiological research or applied research, we can able to find out that what are the positive factors for this different contagious disease, what are the risk factors, okay? And uh, how we can able to overcome these risk factors? What is the death right. rate? What is the infection rate? What is the actually uh, fatality rate? And these are also the part of the epidemiological research. And on the basis of this uh, fatality rate, you can able to uh, adopt the different policy and the strategy. Action research is the most important part. That is the action research that is to solve the problem immediately, instantly. That is the part of the action research. As for example, sanitation campaign, as use of sanitizer. Uh, similarly, when the individual is suffering from uh, diarrhea, that is the worries, this is the action research. This is the part of the action research. Use of the actually the facial marks. This is also the action risk. That is the immediate approach to solve the problem. And operation risk, you know that operation research is going on and at present uh, to tackle this COVID-19 operation research has been uh, actually is, is the best, is the most important aspect at present. Through operation research, you can able to provide the data and different tools are also provided to the program manager for continuous improvement of the health system. You know, in COVID-19, the containment zone, that is, if, if there is COVID-19 one patient, then the total lane has been uh, declared as a containment zone. But on the basis of this operation research, you know that uh, yesterday or 
and day before yesterday, the government also changed their policy that only the particular uh, home where the COVID-19 positive patient has been detected, that house, that that building or that house is uh, considered as a containment uh, house, not the total lane is considered as a containment. So these are all the under operation research. And on the basis of the operation research, what is the present scenario? What is the present picture of a particular contagious disease we can able to know? And on the basis of the benefit of the society, benefit of the community, the strategy is also changed time to time so that we can able to relieve the community members and we also favor their normal life without hindering their work. And we also take proper uh, step or attention to the individual who are also suffering from that contagious disease or infectious disease. Now, nutritionists, there is a specific role in the nutritionist that the training is in different training institutes, the nutritionists take an important role, especially in the health training institute. They can able to focus the importance of the different food items, importance of the different uh, uh, nutrients for the immunomodulation, for the nutrient drug interaction, for the prevention of the particular disease, so that you can able to check the conversion of mild to moderate moderate to severe. So uh, this is the part of the nutritional expert in the training. Similarly, in the government level, nutritional program development, nutritional program, public nutritional program development, the nutritional expert has an important role. What are the food items that should be distributed in this disaster situation so that we can able to provide the uh, important nutrient like the protein as well as the most uh, energy yielding nutrient as well as the other micronutrient which are most essential for that immunoboosting and as well as to challenge the reactive oxygen species. And another role of the nutritionist is the R&D sector. Like us, we are also engaged in the research and development sector. And we like to search out that what are the nutrient ingredients which are present in the different food items uh, in this concern. So one of the cornerstones for the maintaining of the quality level of the health is uh, also under the hand of the nutritional expert and hope to live a healthy and the prospective life is also the part of the nutrition. Now, uh, that is the food is your medicine and medicine is your food, which is the, which is the basic theme of the nutrigenomics. And it was announced by the father of nutrition, that the Hippocrates, about 400 BC before. So it is long time before. Hippocrates also declared that food is your medicine and medicine is your food. And this is very much applicable in this time. And public health approach to infectious diseases that community education that we have already mentioned, that is the role of the public health educator, increasing the resistance of the human host to infectious through the vaccination and nutritional support. This is also the role of public health educator. Community mobilization to tackle the source of infection in this environment, that is through awareness generation, awareness generation. Another one, the case finding, case containment, isolation. This is also public health educator as well as the public health sector. And the screening, surveillance, monitoring, and reporting of the disease outbreak. This is a significant role of the public health educator so that the government can able to take the effective policy for the management of this uh, contagious disease. Now, the important domain that we like to focus on vitamin D for public health, okay? Uh, we know that vitamin D has an immense role on the bone health, which are the classical forms. But from late 20th century, it has been noted that vitamin D has some non-classical, but most important. And it is also immunoboosting activity, immunopositive immunomodulator activity. And through diet, we only provide about 30% of the required vitamin D of the body. And 70% of the vitamin D is coming from the uh, That is by vitamin D synthesis on skin, you can able to provide 70% of the daily requirement of the vitamin. And from one research, it has been indicated that the vitamin D level in, in our country, in our nation, that is the individuals, or that is the, that is the uh, vitamin D level of Indians is comparatively more than the American. And this is, the, this is the one strong point about the resistance of the spreading of this COVID-19, that is the coronavirus in our society. And we also discussed 
later on. That is D3, which is synthesized in the skin. First, it is not the active. It, it, it must be biotransformed. So biotransformation of the D3 is very much essential for the execution of the target. In the liver, it is first undergoes hydroxylation and it's from 25 hydroxy D3. And then in kidney, that is 125 dihydroxy uh, colicalciprol, which is a which is an active vitamin D. But this idea has been changed at present. I'm on the Dharma Shiloji kidney, I'm sorry, or no policy bangla English to do. So kidney I'm on the Dharma Shiloji Sudumatru that is responsible for this conversion of 25 to 125. In the Kore not only kidney, but there are so many immune cells like macrophage, monocytes. Microphage, like neutrophil, these are also important cells. Pulmonary epithelial cells, these are also important cells that can able to convert the 25 hydroxy polycalcitrol into 125 dihydroxy polycalcitrol. So, this is the most important part of the research. In this slide, I like to focus. So, this is the non classical function. And in the first hydroxylation that is going on the liver, and the second hydroxylation, renal cells, and the immune cells, like the T lymphocytes, you know that in an immune cell, Immune cells are of two types. The lymphocytes, which are processed in the thymus gland, thymus for T, that is the T lymphocytes, and the lymphocytes, which are processed, uh, in, especially in the parts of everything in part and in human, that is, in our body, that B cells are actually processed in the bone mass. So T cells and B cell lymphocytes, they can able to convert 25 hydroxy to 125 dihydroxy The macrophage cells, that is the most important immune cell, monocyte is the most important wandering macrophage. That can able to convert 25 to 125. And the dendritic cells, which are the antigen presenting cells, these are also responsible for such conversion. So, this is a very recent observation about, about the biotransformation of the vitamin D. Okay. Now, what is the potent effect of the vitamin D? It again it acts against respiratory tract infection, RTI, respiratory tract infection. Vitamin D3 has antiviral effects, especially against the enveloped virus, like, like coronavirus. It is the enveloped virus. So vitamin D3 is very much effective to destroy the virus, which are enveloped virus, like, like uh, coronavirus. There is a SARS, COVID, SARS, Corona 2. Upregulate antimicrobial peptides. This is the most important. I like to discuss later on that in presence of 125 dihydroxy in the macrophage cell, it can able to switch on the particular gene. And that is a peptide gene that is known as the catalycidine. And this catalycidine is the most important weapon to tackle this coronavirus. Similarly, vitamin D3 also switch on the particular gene that is the human beta defensive 2, HBD2. HBD2. It is also a peptide. And it is the most important biomolecules that can able to fight against the uh, coronavirus. Now, yes, this is the most important, uh, actually, uh, line diagram by which we can able to focus the vitamin D as well as the COVID-19. So macrophage is the most important uh, central, important immune, immune cell that is the play an important and defensive role against the different infection, including coronavirus. So COVID-19, when that bind with macrophage with the ACE receptor, you know, along with the toll receptor, it can able to synthesize and secrete interleukin-12 and interleukin-6. This interleukin-12 and interleukin-6 meant that in presence of COVID-19 antigen, and in vitamin D deficiency, if vitamin D deficit is noted, that means vitamin D level is low, then pro-inflammatory cytokines in the T helper cell one, because actually T lymphocytes are, are also several types, like T helper cell, like T killer cell, like T memory cell, okay? So there are so many T cells. T helper cell also two types, T helper cell one, and in the right-hand side, T helper cell two. T helper cell one, they are also excited by this antigen of this COVID-19. When the vitamin D is level is low, then COVID-19 antigen can able to stimulate this interleukin-1 gene, interleukin-16, interleukin-17, and 21 gene in the T helper cell 1. Interleukin, that means these are actually the uh, signaling molecules. 
interacting molecule between the among between or among the leukocytes and therefore the name is chemical the interleukin so interleukin 1 interleukin 6 interleukin 17 and interleukin 21 that are actually coming from the T helper cell in high level and that results the cytokine storm. And this cytokine storm results the inflammation, not only the pulmonary alveoli, because you know that COVID-19 infects and results different respiratory trouble. Why? That is due to such inflammation of the pulmonary alveoli in presence of interleukin-1, interleukin-6, etc. It also attacks the kidney. These interleukin also attack the kidney activity, renal activity, and renal failure is also associated. And thereby, this is the most important part of the comorbidity with, with corona, COVID-19. Cardiac tissues are also affected by this pro-inflammatory cytokine. So these are the pro-inflammatory sites. But what is the scenario when vitamin D is present? When vitamin D is present, mind that, the macrophage can able to release interleukin-4. And in presence of vitamin D, the T helper cell 2 cell, T helper 2 cell would be active. And they can able to synthesize and secrete interleukin 4, interleukin 5, interleukin 10. And these are anti inflammatory cytokines. And that can able to check that inflammation of the lung, inflammation on the kidney, and inflammation of the heart. And thereby, we can able to uh, give the relief of the complication which is raised to the uh, coronavirus. Now, seven to 10 days required to become active the adaptive arm after activation of, of innate immunity. So after activation of innate immunity, this is the, this is the adaptive arm, that is the interleukin-4, interleukin-5, and interleukin-10. And at present, an approach is also going on. As interleukin-6, where I have already focused that interleukin-6 is pro-inflammatory interleukin. And some of, group of the scientists are also working on interleukin-6 that if we can able to develop some inhibitor of the interleukin-6, because in, in COVID-19 infection, it has been noted the interleukin-6 level is very high. So if we can able to generate some inhibitor of interleukin-6, it may be a therapy, it may, it may, I don't, I'm not against this COVID-19. Yes. Now this vitamin D, along with the poor receptor of the toll like receptor, can able to mine with macrophage. But the viral protein, viral nucleic acid, can able to directly bind with macrophage. Okay, and when this vitamin D is present, the antimicrobial peptide that I have already mentioned, the catelicidin, is also synthesized, which is responsible for viral degradation within this macrophage cell, <coughs> and thereby sorry, proliferation of the uh, coronavirus in the macrophage can be checked, and uh, uh, it is also an important strategy to fight against this COVID-19. Yes, this vitamin D and immunity, that is uh, in connection to this previous slide, I like to say that when this coronavirus can able to attack with through this receptor, toll like receptor, to the, to the macrophage. And if 25 hydroxy follicle for all is level is high, then this macrophage by biotransformation can able to convert 125 dioxy follicle for all. And it binds with vitamin D receptor which is present in the cell. This vitamin D receptor bind with this vitamin D and this receptor vitamin D can able to switch on the catholicidine. That catholicidine, mind that, it can able to enhance the chemotaxis process. Chemotaxis, that is the migration of the phagocytic cells toward the zone of infection by which the infective agent can be destroyed. So we can able to stimulate the chemotaxis. Next one, the immunoresponse can be enhanced by that catalysis. Macrophage activity of phagocytosis is also empowered by that catalysis. Similarly, catalysis can able to increase the vascular permeability of polymorphonuclear leukocytes. That if the vascular permeability is increased, then by diapidesis, diapidesis, that is the neutrophil that can able to leave from the vascular bed to the tissue spread. To the capillary bed. If the vascular permeability is increased by catalysis, then the permeability of the neutrophil, there is a polymorphonuclear leukocyte, PMNL, that can be enhanced and thereby most of the neutrophil comes to the vascular bed, to the tissue space, and they can able to attack the infect, infective, in, infective agent and we can able to fight against this coronavirus. Now, proliferation, this catalysis is also interfere, the proliferation and activation of the T cell and P cell. It can able to enhance the proliferation so the T cell population size 
B cell population size both are enhanced, and the uh, and the co co interlocking activity of the T cell and B cell bridging between the T cell and B cell is going on properly, and thereby we can able to challenge this coronavirus. Next one that HB2 I have already mentioned that HB2 D2 protein human B defensive protein two is also switch on in presence of vitamin D and this this human uh, beta defensive D protein bind that it it bind along the membrane of this coronavirus and when it bind along the membrane of this coronavirus it creates a pore on that membrane and as a result the integrity of the membrane that is the envelope of this coronavirus is degraded and it is unable to proliferate it is unable to replicate and thereby we can able to check we can able to check the uh, population size proliferation rate of the coronavirus in host cell another one is that vitamin d can able to suppress the gene expression of nf kappa b mind that this nf kappa b is a pro inflammatory has strong pro inflammatory response and this pro inflammation is the most important cause for the complication of this uh, covid 19 or coronavirus induced disease so if we can able to check the uh, nf kappa b through vitamin d we can able to uh, check the pro inflammation and thereby the anti inflammatory activity may be dominated and we can able to uh, fight against this covid 19 so this is the most this is the most important slide where we like to say that covid 19 not only attack the macrophage but there is also a bridging activity between the helper cell with the macrophage with the help of there is a mhc histocompatible major histocompatible complex 2 and the toll like receptor so the macrophage and the t helper zero cell there is a not t helper not cell by the joint activity by the joint activity mind that it can able to suppress the t helper one cell line and it can able to dominate or stimulate or enhance the t helper two cell line you know that t helper one cell is responsible for pro inflammation but t helper two cell is known as anti inflammation so what is the what is the role of the vitamin d in short we may say that vitamin d polarizes the adaptive immune system away from t helper cell 1 towards the t helper cell 2 response and if we migrate this immune response from t helper 1 to t helper 2 in presence of vitamin d then pro inflammatory complex cells which are associated with the coronavirus infection can be managed at a significant level and thereby the infection complication could not be moderate degree or severe degree it may be the mild degree type these are the research paper with catelicidin that has been the important protein under the vitamin d is an important role for immune boosting or immune activity this is a Uh, central european journal of immunology where it has been claimed that vitamin d has most important role for immunomodulation and this is this uh, essential for winter infection okay so there are so many papers i am not going in details about that now next one that the zinc and immunomodulation zinc has antiviral activity first one it inhibits the binding of virus on target cell receptor you know that coronavirus also bind with ace receptor angiotensin converting in the receptor along the pulmonary alveolar epithelial cell but zinc if the zinc level is normal then it can able to inhibit the binding of virus on the target cell receptor so at the first line is the first line of defense it also interferes the viral uncoating step and if the viral uncoating is not uh, going on properly then the viral replication cycle would be interfered it in it inhibits the viral genome transcription process that also interferes the viral replication viral doubling rate viral doubling rate would be minimized it interferes the viral protein translation so in the macrophage you know that when the virus is also come into the host cell it also take the machinery of this host cell and synthesize the viral protein as well the viral rna is also replicated and by the fusion of this viral protein and the viral rna the new virus is also developed but this viral protein translation is also interfered by the gene in this microbiome and thereby the viral replication would be interfered it also inhibited inhibited the viral polymerase enzyme you know polymerase okay so rna polymerase dna direct rna polymerase system that would be interfered and thereby the viral replication cycle 
would be interrupted by zinc. So it is also one important uh, mineral or nutrient, which is also uh, immune boosting activity. And this zinc binds with the zinc finger protein, and this zinc finger protein can able to suppress the, the inhibit the NF kappa B. And we know that due to the inhibition of the NF kappa B, the pro inflammatory interleukin, interleukin 2, interleukin 4, interleukin 21, that receptors as well as their level would be decreased. If this receptors level, if the receptor is decreased in their concentration, in their number along the target cell, then the pro-inflammatory response would be checked and thereby anti-inflammatory response would be uh, dominated. Another one is that, another defensive line is that zinc is the most important activator of the some antioxidant enzyme which are present in cell. Like superoxide dismutase is the most important antioxidant enzyme which is present in cell. The activity of the SOT is just controlled by the gene and there was the oxidative stress imposition that can, that can be managed. And with the help of that SOT, that if we can able to, if we can able to enhance our antioxidant activity, then the oxidative stress which is imposed by this coronavirus on the defense cell can be managed and so by elevation of the oxidative stress management as well by anti-inflammation, we can able to fight against this. Uh, <laughs> Similarly, vitamin C and immunity. Vitamin C has also so many roles on the immuno-boosting activity. I like to say several several uh, important outcome about the vitamin C on, and immunity. It also enhances the cytokine production by WBC. It inhibits the apoptosis of T lymphoid. You know that apoptosis is the program cell death. If the T lymphocyte apoptosis, you know that in presence of the COVID-19 infection, T lymphocyte apoptosis rate is increased and thereby the T lymphocyte population size is decreased and there, so the defensive power of our body is also diminished. But if the vitamin C is present, it also inhibits the apoptosis of the T lymphocytes because the vitamin C has an immense role on, on the anti-apoptotic gene expression, anti-apoptotic gene expression. It can able to stimulate the different uh, actually, anti apoptosis that is the uh, BCL2 gene, and thereby the T lymphocyte population size is sustained, it maintained, and thereby we can able to maintain our health status. Similarly, it also helps the production, it also helps the uh, processing of the T lymphocytes in the thyma, it also helps the processing of the B lymphocytes in the bone marrow so that they can able to execute their fine tuning system for the development of the. Uh, uh, but for the development of the antibody, because you know that B lymphocytes, by differentiation, are converted into plasma cells, and these plasma cells are responsible for immunoglobular anti antibody synthesis. The most important function, neuraminidase. Actually, the vitamin C also inhibits the production of neuraminidase. This neuraminidase is an enzyme which is present in coronavirus, and if we can able to prevent this activity of this enzyme, then its replication cycle would be would be would be minimized. So neuraminidase inhibition is another pathway by which vitamin C can able to interfere the viral replication. Okay, uh, so these are all that uh, different ways by which vitamin C can able to uh, improve our immune system. And these are the daily requirement of the gene, vitamin C and vitamin D at different age groups. Okay, I'm not going details about that. Uh, the most important aspect that we like to say, we know that diabetic person, diabetic individual are very much prone to the COVID-19 infection. Why? The question is come that why diabetes, diabetic person are very much prone, are very much susceptible, are very much uh, susceptible to fatality by COVID-19 infection. Because diabetes, that is the hyperglycemia, you know blood sugar level in diabetes is very high, okay? And AC receptor amplification in the pancreatic cell for COVID-19, AC, that is the you know, angiotensin converting enzyme receptor, that is the binding site of this COVID-19. In presence of high glucose, ACE receptor amplification is also noted not only in the alveolar cell, but also in the pancreatic cell. And as a result, the COVID-19 can able to easily attack on the alveolar cell as well as the pancreatic cell in presence of high glucose level. Another one is that, you know that suppose this is the blood vessel, this blue color, this is the blood vessel, and this is the protein endothelial. There is the blood vessel, endothelial cell layer, and the different proteins are present or projected along the cell membrane. Now, if there is a high level of the glucose, then this glucose, without without presence of any enzyme, can able to bind with this protein. That is the finger, that the thread like this is the protein, and the red color, this is known as the glucose. And this process is known as the glycation. So, glycation means 
addition of the glucose to the protein that is the glycation. So the endothelium, along the endothelial surface of the blood vessel, the glycosylation is going on. And as a result, the vascular endothelium, especially in the pulmonary bed, become narrow in diabetic person. And thereby the rate of blood flow to the vascular, to the pulmonary bed is decreased. And thereby the gaseous excess rate is diminished. And thereby the respiratory travel is mainly noted in COVID-19. Uh, and it is very much severe when the individual is suffering from diabetes. Okay. Another one is that, that in, in diabetes, though the blood sugar level is very high, but glucose utilization rate is decreased. So if you consider the immune cell, what is the, what is the status of the immune cell in this diabetic condition? It has been revealed that immune cells dysregulation, their functions is, is, is dysregulated by low level of glucose utilization in the cell. And at that situation, these immune cells can able to utilize a high level of lipid and thereby the free fatty acid level in these immune cells is elevated. So what is the scenario in the immune cell? In the immune cell, there is low level of glucose and high level of free fatty acid. Immune cell glucose level free fatty acid level. And that can able to interfere. That can able to dysregulate the function by five ways. Number one, the acid environment of the immune cell as a result in acidic environment, the performance okay, of the T cell, B cell, cooperativity of the T cell and the B cell, all are affected. And thereby, they are not able to challenge the antigen of the coronavirus properly. Next one, the macrophage activity by this high level of free fatty acid in the immune cell and low level of the glucose, the macrophage activity is decreased. Neutrophil or the microphage activity is also decreased. Interleukin 17 activity is also decreased. Similarly, glyco glycosylation, we also mentioned that glycation of the endothelium is also prevent the diabetes. And due to inhibition of the diabetes, neutrophils are unable to come outside from the vascular way to the tissue space or to the zone of infection. And thereby, the uh, uh, fighting system against this coronavirus is not possible. Another one is that high level of the glucose and a low level of the glucose in the immune cell and high level of the free fatty acid in this immune cell can able to increase the calcium influx. So in this situation, calcium level in the immune cell, in, in, in the immune cells is elevated. And this high level of calcium can able to decrease the beta defensive protein. We have already mentioned the beta defensive protein is the most important protein to fight against this coronavirus. So beta defensive protein level is also decreased, okay? And another one is that in presence of low glucose and high free fatty acid, TH17, that is a 17 interleukin synthesized T helper cell, okay? This is also decreased and there was cytokine storm is also not. If vitamin D is present there, then it can able to prevent the cytokine storm. So this is the scenario by which the diabetic individuals are very much susceptible to the COVID-19. And similarly, the cardiac patients are also uh, susceptible. I have not explained, that, uh, explained this uh, condition due to the lack of time. Uh, so this is the public health domain that, uh, first one, that even of boosting diet pattern, because we have no medicine against this COVID-19 coronavirus, uh, we have no uh, vaccine at present. So only that are, there are the two weapons in our hand to fight against this. One is the dietary pattern and another is the lifestyle. And this diet pattern is also two types. One is the immunoboosting diet pattern and another is the immunokilling diet pattern. I have already mentioned immunoboosting, that is the green vegetables, root vegetables, fruits, green tea, honey, fiber rich food. These are most important for immunoboosting activity. And what are the immunokilling diet, immuno, immuno diet? Fast food, junk food, preservative food, processed food, etc. So we must avoid the fast food, junk food, preservative food, processed food uh, for a few months. Okay, and lifestyle modification, the health friendly lifestyle. lifestyle. <laughs> what is the health friendly lifestyle? Walking 30 minutes per day, which is essential. Sleep at least seven to eight hours for our immune activity because due to, due, at the time of the sleeping, the neural neural cell can able to gain their activity and as a result, several, several neuro, neuro amines that the brain monoamines the system and it can able to linkage with endocrine system and thereby the immune endocrine axis is activated and that is responsible for immune boosting. Timely eating, wake up from bed timely and sleep timely so that we can able to maintain our biology. So it, in this critical point, in this critical period, we must follow this biology. Otherwise you are unable to uh, induce this immune boosting process. And unhealthy lifestyle is the physical inactivity. Physical inactivity is the most uh, unhealthy lifestyle. Minimum sleep is an unhealthy food style. Irregular sleep is an unhealthy food style. Anxiety and awareness and irregular food eating pattern all are unhealthy lifestyle. Okay? Uh, yes.
that that is the most important aspect i i also take um, uh, at least 10 10 minutes is sufficient uh, hard immunity which is the community immunity which is the public immunity the social immunity the population immunity. at present this is the main this is the main weapon at present mind that uh, to fight against the corona virus we have no vaccine we have no medicine so in this you know lockdown phase it is actually lockdown is not a uh, as a preventive strategy for that you, you are unable to inhibit this coronavirus infection but it it also give a time to the administration to, to to develop their infrastructure healthcare infrastructure facilities so that we can able to provide the proper treatment of the covid 19 patient another way that it also provide the proper time to the societal members for immuno boosting so within 3 months within 4 months if we follow this healthy lifestyle then we can able to raise our immune activity and uh, at the unlock phase one and unlock phase two unlock phase three when we come to the society okay if our immune power is very high then we can able to tackle this coronavirus and we actually we can able to develop the immunity all the community members can able to raise the immunity against this covid 19 and that is the hard immunity so healthcare infrastructure has been developed that is immuno boosting is the another way lifestyle food style modification and at the large gathering prevention i like to i like to emphasize here most important one is that that what is the uh, uh, positive points and what are the negative points for herd immunity in indian indian perspective the positive positive points to develop the herd immunity is that 90% of the indian population is below 60 years this is the basic difference between the developed and the developing countries like us 90% of the population is below 60 years and that is 70% of the population is below 50 years okay below 50 years the covid fatality rate is less than 3% below the age of 60 years and if it is up to 30 years this fatality rate is very low that is 0.3% so this is our positive point so our young generation population size of the young indian is very high so if they come to the outside they can able to develop their immunity and ultimately we can able to tackle this corona virus corona infection what are the negative points negative points is that we are also living in a joint family so when the younger comes to the outside and after they returning to home there is a chance of infection to the elder one farm areas we have no sufficient space for the isolation of the elder in the farm and another the most important negative point is that uh, that 22% of the young indian suffering from hypertension and thereby these are very much prone to the so their fatality rate is very high when they are young are suffering from hypertension and if they are also uh, coming in close come in contact with the coronavirus their fatality rate will be high not 0.3 it it, it comes to about 3 to 5% so 22% younger suffering from hypertension this is a negative point of indian perspective 2% 4% of the younger also suffering from diabetes 33% from tobacco smoking these are all the negative because in tobacco smoking you know that our respiratory activity is already decreased and coronavirus also interfere the respiratory activity with the wind effect and 4.2% are already suffering from pulmonary disease so on the basis of this negative point some researchers also claim that is it possible to develop the herd immunity in india in india is it possible to develop the herd immunity because there are so many negative points so if we if we give a one model suppose this is the first unlock phase the community one like healthy healthy individuals like out of 10 there the black color there the healthy immunity 8 and the immune against pathogen no and there the infected by pathogen only 2 that is the red star 2 and after few few days or few weeks okay when this infected person come to the community and the healthy person also come to the community then there is a spreading of this and in the meantime if we can able to develop our immune power then what will happen the scenario has been changed in the community too that means in the second phase where the healthy individual is 5 out of 10 the immune against pathogen is 3 that means they can able to develop against this coronavirus immunity boosting immune boosting has been done and infection is free. and after few weeks or few months okay this herd immunity has been developed that is out of 10 mind that only that the healthy individuals are free the infected against pathogen the immune immune against pathogen that is about 6 60% gain that immune activity against this pathogen and infects infective infective person only one so uh, when these green individuals green individuals in this model is increased then we can able to develop the herd immunity and we can able to fight against this coronavirus 
in this phase one, the graph is like that, that the graph is gradually rising just in this present phase, in this present, in this June first phase, you know that the graph is gradually rising. So we are actually in this first phase. In the second phase, that is after unlock phase one or unlock phase two, the graph will be gradually decreasing. If we follow these guidelines, and ultimately after a few months, it will come to the baseline, okay? And this is another approach of this hard immunity that I like to go a model. This is the, the model, this is the first phase, but the uh, immune powers, immune, that is the yellow immune powers are not, immune individuals are not present there. In the second phase, the yellow colors have been developed. And the third phase, you know, that most of the individual become yellow. That means they can able to develop immunity against this coronavirus. So we must achieve this phase. And for, for such achievement, we must change our uh, immune, uh, our lifestyle, our food style, our behaviors, etc. And uh, if we uh, if we say that what is the death rate of the coronavirus, it is not very clear to us. For last three months in 2020, in India, it has been a, a total world. It has been leveled, leveled that uh, 3,14,687 coronavirus. But if we study the cancer death for last three months. 11.5 lakh, 11 lakh 67,000. Moving, that is a respiratory, respiratory disease mortality rate, 8 lakh 16,000. So it is one third, fatality is one third, coronavirus, one third of the cancer, one uh, less than uh, uh, three times is then the smoking. It, it is half of the alcohol. Okay. So uh, the fatality rate is very, less, very low. So we do not fear about that because if we become panicked, then it can able to increase the reactive oxygen species and the defense cells will be degraded. Okay, so these are actually the different uh, uh, data about that uh, fatal rate of SARS with the 10 percent to 28 percent, COVID only 2 percent, COVID 19. Okay, and under the 55 years age group, it is only 0 0.4 percent. This is the most important. Uh, so, uh, public health guidelines that I like to mention that ever large gathering. Physical distancing is very much essential. Work from home style would be increased in our Indian culture, uh, which was not present previously, but we must adopt ourselves to work from home. That style should be adopted by us. Morning, noon, afternoon shift works. Work that our office work was mainly at the noon, but it would be shifted morning, noon, and afternoon so that we can able to maintain our physical distance. Facial mask use is compulsory due to three layering facial mask. Throw water outside the home, wash hands, lake and facial zone, use in cloth washing. No use of wristwatch, belt, rings, and other ornament for few months. No food consumption outside. Okay. Treat the food after delivery above 70% temperature, 70 degrees centigrade temperature. And then you know that home delivery food, you do not eat directly. After the deliberation of the food, home delivery food, you also warm up at 70 degrees centigrade. Okay. And the most important one. Parts, separate parts should be used for the collected money from the market, not in the original part. And after uh, the return money, you also sanitize it. So the B economy, earning would be limited at post corona phase. This is the most warning signal. B economy, that is expand, that is spent uh, with proper judgment, with proper, uh, uh, actually, money. He said, earning would be limited at post corona phase. Okay, so our slogan, not fear, but the biggest virus is not, the biggest virus is not coronavirus, but fear. Our duty to stop panic. This is our slogan. Okay, this is my lab. And I also congratulate my research scholar, that is Audrey Jatipati, SRF GST in Swar Fellow, Pari Nara, SRF Modern Ajat Fellow, Riya Sarkar, GRF GST in Square Fellow, Proval Ghut, GRF GST, Government of India, Tipanita State GST, Jada Bhomik, Ganguly DST, Women Scientist, Deep Bapal, GRF GST in Square Fellow, and the Sukriti Hajra, uh, West Brown Government Research Fellow. Uh, this is my university. I also congratulate our university as well as I am offering my heartiest thanks to, my, to our Honorable Vice Chancellor as well as the administrate, administrate, all the staff of the administration and the academic faculties. Uh, to do my research work in that institute in oh, this a is proper uh, environment. So thank you, all of you. Okay. Is there any question?
Sir, uh, please stay with us uh, after the second okay, session. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please stay with us, sir. After the second okay. session, we will collect some of the questions and yes, then yes, we yes. will ask you and yes. then we will interact with you, sir. Yes, but yes. Uh, as I have to summarize this session, I really, sir, Amar Kache Kuno Bhashani, should the actor Kothai Monepurayache, one of the famous novelists, Nikolai Ostrovsky, once said, Jibon Jakun Oshahun Nio Hoyote, Takun Kikore Batste Hoy Sheta Sheko. Jivon take a Kajilago. After a Oshatharan seminar, Jara, they could witness. I think they are different what, what they were and what they are now. And you have correctly said and nicely represented from the public health nutrition to the molecular nutrition approach and how to deal with this COVID 19 pandemic scenario situation. And I hope. All the nutrition worker, nutrition researcher, and the budding nutritionist will get benefit out of this presentation. And those who have witnessed this presentation, they will also get an overview about the, the public health importance and the social engineering, herd immunity, all the areas which were, uh, which were very much unclear to all of us and which were not clear or not very prominent to all of us. Now it is having a um, now we have a um, idea that how to deal with this COVID-19 situation and your slogan will definitely help us to and motivate us to deal with this COVID-19 situation because we have to live with this virus for a couple of years at least. So thank you so much sir from okay. the Team Asansol Girls College. It was an I really don't have word to express my gratitude. It was an excellent and I think outstanding de deliberation. Thank you so much sir. Okay but thank you. Or not. With us. Please stay with us. After the second session, we will take a couple of questions and we will get back to you, sir. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Arno. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Okay. So as we are moving forward towards the second, uh, second, uh, second session, we are moving forward. And I would request uh, that brother, uh, so, so friends, as sir talked about the, the larger spectrum public health nutrition, and now it is our responsibility to bring down to the individual aspects and where the diet, particularly uh, the lifestyle importance and the daily dietary modification is, play, is, is important and it plays a huge role. So now I would like to uh, invite one of the, one of, uh, one of the prominent uh, clinical nutrition practitioners one of the Leo, one of the uh, what I should say that um, stalwarts in nutrition science, and um, so, and she is going to discuss with us that uh, that what are the role of uh, this dietitian in this pandemic scenario, in this pandemic situation, and I would request now to uh, our host to uh, make in, uh, to inform her that we are going to start this session, and I would like to uh, introduce her that uh, she is one of the uh, dietitian with international repute and uh, uh, she represents i know personally that the uh, madam represents um, uh, uh, our country in the different global platform in the various sectors of nutrition and dietetics and, uh, because of crunches of time i'm not going to read her biopica or cvs as you know because it will take a lot of time because she is uh, because she is one of the uh, followers in nutrition and dietetics field, and I should say uh, that she is the, the word perfect. It perfectly goes with her that a person. She is the perfect ambassador of this particular word. That uh, she is a person with uh, where we can think that be local but think global perspective. So uh, she is the brand ambassador of this kind of attitude because Madam, um, she does lot of work and her recognition is from international bodies uh, we know that institute uh, international uh, different institution uh, international institute recognized her work and she is one of the leading clinical nutrition practitioners in this uh, state and uh, she is well known dietitian in this country as well so um, she is the registered dietitian and head of the department of dietetics uh, clinical uh, Calcutta Medical Research Institute, Kolkata, Manunia, Ipshita Chakraborty Mohashwaya. I would request Ipshita Chakraborty, Madam, to please come to this online platform and deliver her lecture. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? 
Yes, madam, you are audible. So at the onset, I would like to thank Asansol Girls College for inviting me as a speaker and congratulations for hosting such a nice event. As of now, it's going very nice. And uh, Dr. Devidash was really, really informative, uh, given an informative speech. Thank you, sir, for an informative speech because from your angle, it was entirely different from what I am going to share with um, the podium. And uh, shall I start with my uh, speech now? To start with, I would like to say, because as I'm in the clinic, as a clinical dietitian, I'm working. So many of the students are there in the, the as a participant. So I would request whichever field you choose, either you become an academician or you become a clinical dietitian, please be perfect on the profession because our profession is full of quacks. So please be picked hold on the subject and on the field and be yourself on the field. So we have tried a lot, we have fought a lot, and we are still we are trying to create a forum for all of you, create a platform for all of you, because quackery is full of. So it's a request to all of you, please hold your head, head high in it. So now let me move on to my speech. I'm sharing my skin. What can you do? Video option though, share Goraj. I would request Professor Biru Lajok the host of this webinar, and allow madam to share her... It's already granted. Screen sharing is already granted. Okay, okay. Ma'am, you can share your screen by clicking on share screen. No, let me uh, this thing upload the... Just a minute, I'm doing it, huh? Can you all see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I'm trying to cover up for the nutrition in COVID-19 scenario. Basically, this is a very new virus and there is not much guidelines and much approved guidelines, but the uh, what we are practicing and what we are advising our patients or our hospital sector or a, uh, normal people because uh, to start with each and every person, when it started way back in February or end of February, so um, they started asking me what to eat because this is not a disease which can be prevented by eating something or consuming something. But immunity is the only thing which we can fight it out with. But immunity is another thing which cannot be built in one or two days or in one month. It is uh, like you need to have your diet on a regular basis and it should be balanced with proteins. And I will, now I will, I'm going to share what are you do, going to do. First and foremost thing, it has to be a balanced diet. So maintenance of a state of positive health and optimal performance in population at large by maintaining ideal body weight, 
for pregnant women it and lactating mothers it it has to be adequate nutritional status what rda we have a guidelines called rda so according to that we need to have that improvement of birth weights and promotion of growth of infants children and adolescents to achieve their full genetic potential achievement of adequacy in all nutrients and prevention of deficiency diseases prevention of chronic dietary disorders and maintenance of health and increasing the life expectancy this is nothing but a dietary guidelines by nim 2011 this is a new food pyramid which is being followed like the grains we consume half of all the grains it should be whole grains that means we have a good amount of fiber in it vegetables at least uh two and a half to three cups you need to have fruits fruits eat a variety of whole range of seasonal fruits you don't have to have any fruit. whatever wherever you are staying whatever you are getting that fruits you need to have preferably whole fruit not juices because juices take out all your fibers so it's preferable if you get a take uh, for whole fruits it has to be low fat dairy or a fat free fat free i would rather suggest it's a low fat dairy meats and uh, like protein source it has to be meats and beans like lean uh, protein chicken fish and seafoods you can have if you don't have any other comorbidities you can have it is better if you have can uh, have some like sauteing and like indian cooking not uh, deep frying and all and oils as minimum as possible minimum requirement needs to be fulfilled and a daily exercise of 30 minutes to be maintained and if you are overweight or if you have a tendency of gaining weight or if you genetic genetically predisposed to be overweight so it is better you make it 45 to 60 minutes or more the more you can do the more you can make your ideal body weight that is uh, advisable and preferable and in fats and oils fats should come from fish nuts and vegetable oils preferably avoid saturated fats and trans fat and keep your sodium intake at a very low basis because recently we had a slogan from fcci and we i as id in the nadrik association also promoted that ek chutki namak so it is like thoda sa kam so it's 1 teaspoon 5 grams to 6 grams per day if you can have that it will be preferable and don't try to avoid additionally additional sugar in your diet previously we used to have that pyramid uh, like And where the fruits and vegetables and grain used to be stacked like that. So these days we prescribe in a plate form. So this is like from two of my uh, pictures, it can be seen. Uh, U.S. dietary guidelines: fruits and vegetables should be half of your plate. Grains and proteins again should be half or half of the plate should be covered with equally half. and a minor portion should be there as dairy so you can see it's a pictorial representation on the right hand side of the plate and it's a diagrammatic representation on the left hand side of the of the slide this is milk type indian milk type it's for a like for that covid scenario i'm going to uh, uh, i mean uh, give you a slide which contains lots of spices which has immunity capacity so it's milk with haldi so early morning you can have that mid morning you can have a juice or a like any whole fruit breakfast it should be nutritious good amount of carbs and protein it should be that mid morning you can have a lassi lunch it, there should be carbs there should be good amount of protein protein fat should be there which contains a good amount of probiotic evening snacks with a bit of carbs and green tea in dinner some ra i mean rice or roti some uh, protein and some vegetable fiber even instead i am giving i have given a, a broader scenario like we bengali we prefer lots of uh, like non veg items so you can add fish or chicken or egg in your diet on a daily basis and at bed time you can have a like have an orange with vitamin c also helps in you know as a 
These are the conventional groups like comes under cereal, millets, and pulses. Second, vegetables and foods, meat, fish, egg, milk, and milk products, fats and oils, nuts and oil seeds. These are these are the major four food groups. This is RDA. We all know what is it. Just for a broad uh, guideline, just for a uh, I mean uh, review sort of a thing. I am sharing. This is RDA 2010. another rd is uh, going to come shortly but still in the pipeline not yet to be it's yet to be published when we prescribe a diet or when guide something so nutritional goal is there so what is what we look into while prescribing a diet should be variety in diets we must look into local traditional and seasonal fruits and vegetables we are not supposed to prescribe which is not available in our country in our locality so whatever is there in your region your and uh, seasonal also we need to look into the religion and religious preferences food intolerances we need to look into and for that we need to have a robust dietary assessment dietary recall i must say because we need to talk to the patient or patient relative in a detailed way so that we can formulate a diet chart for that particular person traditional types of cooking and recipes because these days we depend a lot on either uh, like uh, pack sort of a way we get some food online food otherwise packaged food which i am strongly against once in a while it's fine you can enjoy you can have a cheat day but on not on a daily basis just to minimize our um, like um, throughout the day we are working we are coming back tired so we either uh, order something online or just buy a packet of something and we get it home and we just have it this is not done at all because in the long run it develops lots of comorbidities which ultimately leads to lots lots of complications maintenance of hydration avoidance of outside and processed food what i've already mentioned good exercise yoga and meditation at least 5 days a week 30 to 45 minutes of simple walking i am not asking you anybody to go to even in my to my patients i never tell them to go to the gym simple walking will do but walking should be walking not not with a group of friends so that you just go on chatting and walking you wow, no speed no calorie burn so it is better you walk alone now i will hop on the diet which can boost your immunity protein the most important thing because it can, it has the property to combat diseases healing and recovery this is just a picture you can see this is first class protein this is a these are eggs variety of dals milk and milk products this is soybean for vegetarian source of protein this is a very very good quality protein and it has a good amount of protein in it So soy in any form you can have a soy as dal as tofu so as chunks so as milk anything and everything you can have as soy from soybean vitamins it can act as hormones and antioxidants promoting differentiation proliferation and signaling interestingly vitamins may also be essential to the function of the immune system helping to balance inflammatory and suppressive responses i am going little to the basics but because as i am addressing students also so these are the vitamins which had good potential uh, immune modulating modulating property vitamin a protects by keeping skin and tissues in the mouth stomach intestine and respiratory system healthy d has a, has a antimicrobial effects reduce the pro inflammatory cytokines and promotes healthy gut microbiota e acts as an antioxidant and radical scavenger and helps in modulating the host immune responses in elderly b6 intense intestinal immune regulation cytotoxic activity reduces inflammation amino acid synthesis of metabolism b9 cyto cytotoxic uh, activity antibody production and metabolism antibody response to antigens B12 gut microbiota T cells production immunomodulator intestinal immune regulation and vitamin C stimulates antibody formation supports cellular function 
now comes the mineral these are the three major minerals which has a very good again i am saying the what immune boosting property zinc is crucial for normal development and function of cells mediating innate immunity neutrophils and nk cells macrophages also are affected by zinc deficiency phagocytosis intracellular killing and cytokine production of all are affected by zinc deficiency selenium plays an important role in the health of your immune system this antioxidant helps lower oxidative stress in your body which reduces inflammation and enhances immunity magnesium dependent magnesium dependent functions in synthesis release and activity of cells in the immune immune system and have been reported from in vivo and in vitro studies its uh, deficiency in animal is associated with impaired function of both humoral and cell mediated immunity these are omega rich in omega 3 fatty acid you can see chia seeds or flax seeds salmon walnut avocado almond these are all rich sources of omega 3 so a handful of nut which can work as a like a um, filler sort of a thing like evening snacks you can have a handful of nuts which helps in weight reduction at the same, same time which uh, works as a good uh, source of omega 3 probiotic and prebiotic this is a very important thing both support in body building and maintaining a healthy colony of bacteria and other microorganisms which support the gut and as uh, aids digestion this food components help promote beneficial bacteria by providing food and creating an environment where microorganisms can flourish I have given some pictorial representation of prebiotics and probiotics. Examples of prebiotics are garlic, onion, banana, barley, oats, apple, flax seeds, wheat bran, and probiotics are fermented milk, fermented. In South India, they have lots of fermented food products, so that is really really good for health. These are few food items, and on the right hand column, the and. Sorry, and uh, the right hand column. These are the antioxidants present in the spices. So, if you can have little bit of these spices on a daily basis in your diet, that helps again your daily intake of your antioxidants. Like black pepper, this phenolic amides and flavonoids. Ginger is gingerol. Turmeric, curcumin, red pepper is capsaicin. Chili pepper is capsaicin and capsaicinol. Clove, eugenol, rosemary, carnosic acid, carnosol, rosmar, rosmarinic acid, and rosmanol. Sage is sage, rosemary, oregano, thyme. These are little like um, uh, Western uh, dishes are. Uh, we can use uh, these in uh, Western dishes. We normally don't use it in Indian uh, dishes. And oregano derivatives of phenolic acid, flavonoids, and tocopherols, and thyme like carbacrol, thymol, thymine. <clears throat> and uh, carboin bonyol these are the daily allowance that we these are the items which you we normally use like turmeric 400 to 600 mg powder like one to three times a day we indian diet contains almost turmeric almost in every diet especially when uh, fish or chicken or egg or this sort of preparation we never had without turmeric saffron this is not Uh, so uh, regularly used in our diet fenugreek again we use it 5 grams per day cinnamon 1 to 1.5 grams per day star anise 0.5 to 3 grams of the seed nutmeg 1 to 2 uh, mg per kg body weight garlic 2 to 5 gram uh, per day and ginger 3 to 4 times a day uh, around 1 gram Now I'm coming to the dietary guidelines for COVID patients. All COVID patients are not too serious, and they are not required to be hospitalized. So to start with, if you don't have a very strong symptoms, you are not supposed to. You cannot. You can stay indoor, and you can isolate yourself in the home itself. Because these days, presently, being in the hospital, we see a lot of. people roaming around asymptomatic but if they are tested we find them positive 
so they can be kept home in isolation it's not necessary that you get admitted in the hospital so good nutrition is the key to combat any disease for any age as i shared in my beginning of my talk that immunity cannot be built in few days of good nutrition or having immunity boosting diet uh, for a brief period you can build your immunity all covid 19 cases are not critically ill they need that hospitalization what i was sharing they can have mild to moderate respiratory distress and can be cured at home staying in isolation as per guidelines but patients with old age having cardiac issues comorbidities like diabetes hypertension or on immunosuppression are more prone to develop complications bolo sob mal ni dile se ki kore ki ho mal bolo patients who can eat on their own having no risk for vomiting and aspiration oral diet should be given and the goal is to meet normal nutritional requirement when intake is normal treatment has to be multidisciplinary approach having qualified clinical dietitian nursing physician in the loop with mild symptoms good nutrition helps the body fight infection so provide adequate but not excessive nutrients so don't give uh, feed them excess and maintain maintenance of healthy body weight is important increase frequency of meals to compensate the increased calorie requirement during fever food should include all variety of food groups energy rich food foods protein rich food which should include meat fish chicken milk legumes pulses and along with that fruits and vegetables consider supplementation like vitamin c zinc vitamin a b6 d e iron folate fiber if not getting enough from the diet coughs can be relieved by soothing foods like warm liquids vegetable soup or chicken soup warm water some honey with ginger or ginger water some salt Uh, this can be used so thought can be relieved by taking tea honey ginger turmeric sage some uh, culinary herbs like kalonji turmeric ajwain ginger or you know sage cinnamon may be may be, uh, may be added or beneficial increase consumption of fruits and vegetables in encourage to improve antioxidant levels in your body ensure enough sleep reduce stress exercise and avoid intake of alcohol and tobacco products hydration to be maintained because during this phase one can have fever coughing vomiting or diarrhea so visible and invisible fluid loss are there so inadequate fluid just to avoid inadequate uh, in i mean fluid loss to avoid that you need to have either drinking water or any beverage only nimbu pani or unsweetened fruit juice juice buttermilk lassi any form you can have some dal water also you can have but you have to have some sort of fluid in any form to maintain hydration now comes the nutrition for a critically ill patient who are admitted in icu minimize catabolism by ensuring adequate intake of nutrients through normal diet parenteral or enteral nutrition depending on the severity of the illness the nutrition management of icu patients with covid uh, is in uh, is in principle very similar to other icu patient admitted with pulmonary compromise like ards patient what uh, we normally get uh, in in a hospital icu patients receiving inadequate oxygen may complain of anorexia early satiety malaise bloating and constipation or diarrhea in icu patients with dysphagia soft or semi liquid food can be considered after extubation if swelling is proven unsafe rt can be inserted and enteral nutrition started but for enteral nutrition again i would like to say don't give any homogeneous or kitchen based feed it has to be a formula feed which gives you the exact nutrition exact protein amount exact calorie what we are prescribing for that particular patient because that is an entirely different topic which i am just highlighting this homogeneous of kitchen feed neither health friendly nor exact nutrition what we are thinking that through kitchen feed we are going to get patient don't get that because after 
after after diabetes, after usually resulting feeding if GI is not functioning, then we have to switch over to parenteral feeding. But that is the last option. First and foremost, if your GI is working for any feeding, if GI is using gastrointestinal tract is using is working, use that. First choice is oral feeding. Second choice, if patient cannot swallow properly, cannot cooperate, then chances of aspiration is there. Then rice tube feed. If rice tube is also not tolerated, then only parenteral feeding. Now, when and how? Early nutrition should be started from within 24 to 30. Initiated proactively, specifically, if the patient cannot have adequate oral intake. Early enteral feeding at a trophic rate is usually tolerated in most patients with sepsis or circulatory shock. Trophic feed means we need to start at a very slow rate. When the patient starts, starts tolerating, we need to increase that. In case, case of feeding intolerance with ileus like abdominal distension or vomiting, uh, are present, uh, present in COVID-19 disease with shock, enteral nutritional uh, feeding, EN feeding can be suspended. Early pain should be initiated as soon as possible in high-risk patients for whom early EN is, is not advisable. EN is preferred, as I already shared, should be withheld in the patient with hemodynamic instability requiring vasopressor support, continuous rather than bolus. Enteral nutrition is strongly recommended. Continuous feed means there's a machine through which you can, or uh, that feed is, uh, I mean, hanged in a feeding bag and the, it can be regulated like um, the way IV drip is given or given or blood is uh, given during hospital admit admission. So that way, continuous feeding can be given. So throughout the day, patient can be given feed. Feeding should be initiated with a low dose of EN preferred as hypocaloric or trophic, what as I was sharing in my earlier slide. Advanced, advancing to full dose EN slowly over first week or of critical illness to meet the energy goal of 15 to 20 kilocalories per kg of actual body weight per day, which should be 70 to 80 percent of the calorie requirement. Protein goal of the unstressed adult patient with adequate organ function requiring nutrition support is 1.3 gram per kg per day to 1.5 gram per kg per day. Requirement may rise with metabolic demands to level to levels of about 2 gram per kg per day and 1.2 to 2 gram per kg uh, of actual body weight per day because it entirely depends on the patient who is suffering. So it may also happen that that particular person is already cachectic. So in that case, we need to increase the intake. Uh, I mean, uh, the feed given. Fat and carbohydrate needs are adapted to the energy needs while considering an energy ratio from fat and carbohydrate between 30 is, is to 70 to 50-50 for ventilated patients. In the early acute phase of critical illness, what sort of formula should we use? Enteral formula choice should be of a standard high protein. It should be more than 20% of protein. Protein should be there in that product. It should be polymeric and iso-osmotic. In case of significant GI dysfunction, a fiber-free formula may be better tolerated. It is important to reinitiate a fiber-containing formula or a supplement as soon as the gas is cut, the gut is start functioning to offer po uh, positive gut modulating and microbiota benefits. Benefits of fish oil containing formula have been documented as beneficial due to immune modulation from omega-3, especially in viral infection. In patients with mild and severe sepsis, immune modulating formula may be harmful, therefore are not recommended. Oral nutrition supplement should be used whenever possible to meet patients Nutritional needs when dietary counseling may not be sufficient to increase uh, increase dietary intake to reach the nutritional goal or 
uh, and provide at least 400 to 600 calories, including 30 grams of protein per day. Vitamins and minerals, multivitamin and multimineral supplement, supplements are recommended either oral, enteral, or parenteral in all foods. Many a times increased demands to, uh, to double or multiple times more than RDA. Vitamin D deficiency has been associated with a number of different viral diseases, including influenza. So this is not influenza, but uh, sort of a viral infection. So vitamin D has to be taken care. Uh, it's, it's really uh, like supplementation has to be taken care. Recommended doses 10 to uh, 100 mcg per day. Vitamin E is anti-infective uh, vitamin. It's called like that. Since many body, uh, many of the body's defenses against infection depend on an AI adequate supply of vitamin A. During recovery, like now we can expect a patient treatment is done, we can't expect a patient getting discharged from a hospital. So during recovery phase or even at home, patient is getting recovered. The patient is counseled to continue eat, to eat a high calorie, high protein diet. The diet along with regular exercise would regain any muscle mass that could, could be lost during illness and help to get back to normal activities. So healthy balanced diet are important to maintain good health and immunity. Diet should have high biological value proteins uh, by such time, by this time. You all must be knowing what is high biological value proteins. All first class proteins include uh, non veg items, milk and milk products, complex carbohydrates, and a good fat. Micronutrients and importance uh, of very much of importance that should be included, like vitamin E, A, E, C, and uh, minerals like selenium, zinc, and magnesium. These are all I have mentioned earlier. Carbohydrate, it should be preferably complex carbohydrate in the form of whole cereals, starchy vegetables, and whole grains. It, uh, carbohydrates are also present in fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, as I already said, to have fresh fruits instead of juice. Uh, it's uh, like uh, whole grain like wheat flour, corn, red, brown, brown rice, jowar, batra, ragi should be taken. Refined flour should be restricted in the diet. I mean diet. These occur, occur in corn flour, refined wheat flour, products made from the same refined sugar and uh, products made with that. In addition, simple sugar in aerated beverages, sweetened beverages and carbonated drinks is better to avoid. Protein, already I have shared, it has to be a high biological value protein and, <coughs> sorry. Uh, immune system is dispersed throughout the body to provide rapid response to the infection. So cells travel throughout the bloodstream in or in specialized vessels called lymphatics. So lymph nodes and spleen provide structures that facilitate cell-to-cell -cell communication. So protein, as you all know, protein works best to provide defense against infection. So high protein is mandatory for both in case of vegetarian and non-vegetarian. Vegetarian, which I've already shared for non-vegetarian, I mean non-vegetarian, I've already shared. For vegetarian, you must include legumes, pulses, chana, moon, soybean, soy products, and dairy products in your red daily diet in a good quantity. Fats should be there. So 20 to 30% of the total calorie should, be, should come from uh, your daily intake. So proportion should be saturated fat, MUFA and PUFA in the ratio of 1 is to 1.5 is to 1. Saturated fat sources are basically animal products and dairy products like full fat milk or ghee or butter or something of that sort. So these are to be minimized. And if it's avoided, better. MUFA-based oil like olive oils, soybean, groundnut, almond, rice bran. MUFA-based oils are walnuts, soybean oil, safflower, cornflower oil. Omega-3 sources are uh, like flax seeds, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, like DHA, fatty fish, like salmon, tuna, mackerels, and sardines. These are not really regularly eaten. Pan India, coastal region, sometimes they usually have it. Pan India, it's not eaten. And avoid trans fat. So now it comes to the caregivers. 
of the patients and food handlers it's a, just a basic guidelines so only diet will do along with that we need to take care of ourselves along with the person who are making the food the person who is taking care of the patient so caregivers and food handlers should take care so few guidelines for them adequate care like mask gloves caps to be worn during food handling at the time of preparation and servicing as there can be transmission from asymptomatic carriers also employees in a hospital to maintain a distance of 1 meter from each other and wear mask all the time coughing and sneezing etiquette needs to be followed sneezing on coughing into the elbow these are all small small things which all of us are knowing by this time who guidelines our state government guidelines our national guidelines guidelines how easily we can follow these and using tissues and immediately discarding them them after use coronavirus may be active on surfaces and food packets for a longer time thus for accepting food given ingredients and fresh produce delivery during storage and procurement of the supplied for pre preparation and preparation the employee must wear gloves and must follow correct hand washing protocol after touching or handling such material the employees must avoid touching face and eyes so even when you are buying some vegetables from the market you should immediately wash it after procuring it for them from the market Food storage and preparation areas are to be sanitized on a regular interval. Other possible formats, which could be you have a residual viral load, like doors, handles, door uh, door knobs, switches, trolley jacks, workbenches, equipments, and any other equipment surrounding the patient area are identified by the hospital, and most of these are to be maintained home as well. to be cleaned and sanitized on a regular interval so thank you and if you have any queries is hello am i audible and visible yes okay uh, this is professor palayan majinda from assistant civil college and i'm going to take the yeah, list part of the radio session it actually yeah. uh, so Thank you so much, Ipshita Sarkarji, ma'am, for this wonderful deliberation. You really did point out that uh, what should be the nutrition importance in our daily life for the prevention and also in the clinical aspects. So thank you so much, and uh, I'm so ha uh, happy and uh, thankful that you did point it out that uh, such pressure is going on in the field of diabetes, and uh, we should rely on the reliable sources, the qualified ones. And you mentioned that, so thank you so much. And in a way, Doctor David has told us that we should follow the rules. So, in this way, we are going to be able to discuss what the body wants and the nutrition is. The role of the body is very important. It is a very important aspect of our journey. So, the nutrition and the nutrition is the role of the body. So, it is very important. So, it is very important. So, thanks for that. And both the speakers can be on the same page. So, thank you. Uh, so after this wonderful and informative session, uh, interactive session, I mean, I should go to Zaybo with the due permission of the both speakers. So, ma'am and sir, can I? Hello, if you can, ma'am, did you sir? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Pallavi, I'm not here. You are audible. Okay, okay. So I'm trying to take in some few questions, though the time is very limited. Uh, I'm going to take some questions. Okay, so the uh, first question is from Doctor uh, Shubendra Nath Roy. Uni bolte hain se who bolte hain jara niramish bhoji ta der corona hawa shambhu na kam. Ita kya thik? To ami the Doctor David Ash ko sir ko request ko bolte hain to answer kar. Okay, thank you for your question. Amra bolte hain the young generation, young generation is immune activity status, immune activity power is strong. Even Within few weeks, they can able to even boost themselves to diet. So sometimes when they are even boosting, they diet is good. Even boosting, they can take away. Even in our Indian scenario, the young generation is near about seventy percent. Therefore, our young generation unlock phase one, phase two, they can go. Our government has said they have about fifty-five years. That is why they are not doing it. 
ट्रागलिंग Actually, in young generation, helper two cell type two, type two is more dominant over the helper one. Even that for example, our slide has seen that helper two cell activation hard poly, you can able to raise the anti-inflammatory response. Anti-inflammation only ki ha, anti-inflammation only. Our that is vital organ, especially lung, especially kidney, and the cardiac tissue. If inflammatory response hard chance for a form, that for example. You can able to tolerate this antigenic exposure from this uh, coronavirus. So, age junior, I am going to say that age, there are some younger generation that they have immune power. Only basic, I am going to add that our immune system is not very good. So, age, I am going to government that strategy, that public health strategy, that about fifty five years that they work at the same part of the class that they work at. No, that is for a number of years. मैम দেখো ফ্র্যাঙ্কলি স্পিকিং আমি পাবলিক হেলথ নিউট্রিশনের লোক নই সো परसेंटेज অফ এ ইউজড লাইক পটাশিয়াম পারম্যাঙ্গানেট টু বি ইউজ আমি তোমাকে এ দিতে পারবো না व्हाट আই ক্যান নট আই এম শেয়ারিং বাট কোনো এ ইউজ করবে না ডিটারজেন্ট ইউজ করবে না কিন্তু অফ পটাশিয়াম পারম্যাঙ্গানেট এ সোপ কি খানিকক্ষণ সোপ করিয়ে দেন ইউ ডিসকার্ড দা ওয়াটার এন্ড ওয়াশ ইন ফ্রেশ ওয়াটার এন্ড দেন ইউজ দ্যাট বাট আই ক্যান নট এক্স্যাক্টলি Sure, the percentage of uh, potassium. If sir can, that I'm, I'm not sure, but I cannot. Okay, so ma'am, actually the common uh, thing is, somebody has to query that, so the kibha be tole wash kora uti. My diet is different perspective. So, okay, so apni jodi shita actually recommend kono kibha be wash kora uti. Potassium permanganate. Mm-hmm. Jole, I am just kori few drops ke diye uh, vegetables gulo ke hani kono soak kori rakhe di. Then, ta ke mane tule niye fresh water e wash kora. Then I use those vegetables. आशा कुछ इधर भी follow कोले आमे वाले से शेड तक के prevent करते पार बनो। अनुकेज जब आप वाले से जाते हैं, इचो detergent दे रही चे, जॉलर मोड दे दे रही चे, washing it करेले, please please don't do that. Yeah, that is not recommended at all. So detergent तो बहुत good. आह एक बार any sort of personal disease के doctor जिस जैसे के ना जिस को तो जाते हैं। वो भी detergent ही ना। Personal तो ऐसे जो उम्मीदवार रहे। Uh, vitamin C and vitamin D, which is uh, more effective. Vitamin D, what is that? Vitamin D, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Shun to pach. Yeah, I'm going. Yes, I'm going to repeat. What is it? Vitamin C, vitamin C, and vitamin D. What is the quantum? Which is effective? Quantum effective. Okay, right. Very, very, very good question. Okay, very good question. Thank you, sir. 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 Now you know that uh, vitamin C is a water soluble, but vitamin D is a fat soluble. And you also know along the membrane, cell membrane, there is a lipid bilayer. So the permeability of the vitamin D is more than the vitamin C. So in intracellular environment, cell is more there. On the other side of the body, the anti-antioxidant activity of the vitamin D is more. कारण इस पार्मिलिटी और इन पायोबिलिटी और इन फिशी इन रेस्पेक्ट तो विटामिन सी विटामिन सी तो जॉलेज दर जो यूज़ होता है एवं तार पर इसके लिपिड सेल में हमने जो लिपिड बाइलेयर शेड दी आते हैं और फिशी शुमार है नंबर वन नंबर टू जी विटामिन सी वाटर सोल्वेल वाई ते एक्सेस विटामिन सी दैट कैन � So vitamin D can able to store there, and 
this activity of the vitamin D is more potent. Okay, in respect to that antiviral activity, there's the vitamin C. Thank you, sir. Next question is Ikshita Ma'am ki Jigesh Kutu Saibu Akansha Sharma. She is asking, how can we fulfill the recommendations of vitamin B12 without supplementations? You are a non-vegetarian. You should not have any deficiency in vitamin B12. Otherwise, vitamin B12 supplementation, I am not saying to ask supplement vitamin B12. So if you are a non-vegetarian, it ultimately that uh, gives you enough supply of vitamin B12. So have uh, like an egg per day. If you're a Bengali, you either fish or chicken is there in your diet. So I don't think uh, vitamin B12 deficiency is not so common in uh, non-vegetarian population. रिकारि फेस बेटर যদি پیشنট খেতে পারে আই হ্যাভ টোটালি আমি আমার স্লাইডে পপপ পপপ বলে গেছি যে কি কি জিনিসগুলো ইমিউনি বুস্টিং ডায়েট গুলো কি কি দেওয়া উচিত কিছু স্পাইসেস আছে যেগুলো ইন আ মডারেট অ্যামাউন্ট ইট শুড বি देयर ইন দা ডায়েট প্রোটিন কোয়ালিটি অবশ্যই করে রাখবে ডায়েটের মধ্যে দই এজ প্রোবায়োটিক সেটা অবশ্যই করে রাখবে ডায়েটের মধ্যে সো দিস আর দা ফিউ থিংস ইউ শুড কিপ ইন ইওর ডায়েট অন আ ডেইলি বেসিস थैंक <laughs> So uh, we are at the end of the webinar session. So on behalf of the webinar committee, I would like to present a vote of thanks now. Uh, I'm uh, first of all, we are really very thankful to both the speakers, Dr. Vidya Shukla and Dr. Kapoor Diman, for giving this wonderful session. And in spite of their busy schedule, we are here. So I'm very thankful to them. Uh, and also like to uh, express my gratitude to Dr. Uh, Shubhendu Kapoor, our vice principal, sir. And I do see coordinator Dr. Shamil Shiv sir and his entire team of IPOC for giving this opportunity to arrange this kind of webinar session. Uh, I would also like to congratulate and thanks all the uh, members, organizing committee members, uh, for their continuous support, continuous effort to make this webinar a successful one to happen. This kind of webinar. So I'd like to thank Dr. Shamil Gorai. Shuji Jana, Dr. Kodi Bhati, Dr. Sipili Rajo, Dr. Shubha Shish Ghosh, and Dr. Sukhmani Chatterjee. Also, like to thank Dr. Sawan Chatterjee, my co-convener and co-host for the session. And I would also like to express my thanks to entire team of Asansol Girls College, so that uh, everyone, every teachers, all the youth members, all the students and teachers. To really uh, be a support system for making this kind of webinar, and also uh, not last but at least I would like to thank the wonderful participants who were uh, really enthusiastic showing the art, and they are really active during the session. So thanks for the participation and thanks for the cooperation. In future, if we are able to arrange this kind of seminar or webinar, we will make it happen. And expecting that this kind of participation. Salutation, Professor. No, no, no. For the certification part, I would like to inform that there is a feedback link given in the WhatsApp message trail, also sent to the registered email ID of each one. So after the session, this will be activated, so fill it up, uh, and after that, you will be getting the certification. Designation, designation. Finally, the take-home message I would like to share that education is a very very important role. And uh, that should be taken care, and that should be derived from your qualified ones only. So take care of your nutrition, and in the long run, it will take care of you in the aspect of life. 